I always grab it. It's always in my hand. As a freshman in college, my cousin Tamia is a pro at social media. I send out a hundred Snapchats and then I'll probably get double that because I don't answer all of them. And she can't fight the urge to check her accounts all day long. Waking up, brushing her teeth, playing basketball, on her way to class, during class, at a campus event, just to make plans, she still has to take out her phone, at lunch, in her second class, and hanging out with friends, of course, but she's not the only one. The thing that's new about social media is the way that this social learning happens has changed. One of the reasons is that with mobile social media, teens have access to their peers more than ever. So they're in that peer context almost constantly. Back in the day, communication was limited. Shy of a letter, phone call, or meeting in person, there wasn't this constant social stimulation at your fingertips. So we've gone from speaking face to face to connecting screen to screen. One of the main reasons for these social platforms is to stay connected with people, get information out there, receive information, basically be nosy in everyone's lives, and then people can check in on, on you as well. Today, there's a real concern that teens are not learning how to communicate and are not developing empathy, the ability to understand how someone else is feeling. Lack of empathy can increase bullying, cheating, and even have a negative influence on mental health. Communicating online means you don't have to face in-person consequences, so you might be more likely to make mean comments or cyberbully. Some experts are saying that teens are losing their ability to communicate with others because of technology. What do you think about that? Um, I agree to an extent. I feel like because people are so invested in their phones, their technology, that emojis and acronyms have been substituted for expression and communication. And these days, our interactions are numbered, literally. Interactions online are now quantitative, so that means there's a number associated with them. And that's something that has never really happened before. Lauren Sherman, a postdoctoral researcher at Temple University, examined the way teens perceive information online. She did this by studying a social media platform many of you use every day, Instagram. Lauren found that teens were more likely to like a picture that already had a lot of likes. And something else happened when teens liked these pics. There was more activity in the reward circuitry of the brain. So for teens, getting a like on social media feels just like winning a prize. I still post to get likes. Researchers also found that the rewards part of the brain really lit up when they saw a lot of likes on their own photos which might persuade them to get on social media more. So you could say social media is affecting the way we adapt to our environment. If I'm a teenager and I post a picture on Instagram and it gets a lot of likes, and I post another similar picture and it gets a lot of likes, over time, I'm probably more likely to post these kinds of pictures. And it can take a lot of planning to post these popular and rewarding pictures. So you plan your outfit around the post? Yeah, I'll plan my, like if it's an event, I plan what I'm going to wear. And then like depending on where the location is, then I'll think of like where I want to take the picture. And then before anything starts, I'll get the picture out the way. A study last year suggests the more time young people spend on social media, the less happy they are about their lives. And that unhappiness hits girls harder than boys. It can be really hard sometimes when you see that your friends look like they're always having fun and they always look perfect. And then you think about the fact that they've chosen the moments that really make them happy and that they want to remember. There are certain platforms where you see mostly the perfect person who always have adventures. But in reality, it's a once in a while type thing. The best way to navigate this fast-paced world is to maintain a tech-life balance, if there is such a thing. One thing that is important is for teens to be developing digital literacy skills, skills that allow them to use social media and use other digital media in a way that's responsible, in a way that makes them feel comfortable. One text at a time. Arielle Hickson, Channel One News.